I don't care. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Friends, welcome. We're so glad to see so many of you here in the sanctuary. And friends who are worshiping with us from the comfort of your homes, we're glad that you're with us as well. Um, those of you here, I know that um, James has been working really hard to get everybody's uh, names into our attendance registration. If you have not registered your attendance, please be sure to see him at the end of worship. And those of you who are worshiping online, we invite you to register your attendance as well. You can either use the Church Center app on your phone. Uh, please be sure to pick the one that says um, online as opposed to in person. And um, uh, also, there's another way you can register, which is by tapping on the connection card link at the top of your screen uh, and filling out that form. We invite you to do either one. Um, so friends, uh, just as a reminder, this uh, particular service is a masks recommended service. Those of you who are fully vaccinated, of course, do not have to wear a mask unless you w wish to. Um, and uh, we also want to remind you that singing is uh, best um, recommended if we, um, by when we wear masks, um, but uh, many of us are not doing that, but we, that's okay. Um, but if you uh, prefer to wear a mask, we invite you to do that as well. Speaking of singing, let us uh, begin our worship this morning uh, with our invitation to worship. Surely the Lord is present. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Number 328. We'll sing it one time through. <laughs> so In Psalm 122, the psalmist wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. As God's people, the church, we are glad to be in worship today. Let's join together in our response, call to worship, and the words will be displayed. A church, oh, we are the church that lives today. A church that lives by the work of Christ who was and is and is to come. A church that rejoices in its connection with God. That's all. We are the church that lives today. A church united across space and time. A church of many races, languages, and ages. A church that lives by the work of Christ, who was and is and is to come. A church that rejoices in its connection with God. Let us worship together as one people, God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue our worship with our hymn of praise. We are the church, and we'll sing all four verses. Church is not a building, the 
me in the opening prayer and the words will be displayed on the screen. Gracious God, we rejoice that we have come together as your church to worship you. Thank you for inspiring and leading your people to establish your church in this place called Queen Creek. We pray that all who worship here, whether in person or online, will experience your presence this day and every day. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Marlene. <laughs> All right. Good morning and good morning, kids. It is time for our children's message. So those of you who are worshiping online, gather around your TV or your iPad or your computer because I have something to share with you. Um, Katie, I wonder if you could put the image on the screen for me. I realize that our instructions say just to have the camera, but if you could put the image on the screen, all right. Um, what is the image that you see on the screen? A cheerleader. Folks here in the sanctuary, what does a cheerleader do? Raw, raw, cheers. Yes, leads cheers, hence the word cheerleader. <laughs> now, where do we normally see cheerleaders? Ball games, football games, maybe basketball games, right? We might see them. Um, we might even see them in parades, right? Well, I happen to have a picture here of a little cheerleader. I didn't get it on the screen, but I'm going to bring it up close for our kids on the camera. You can go back to camera two. This might be someone that you kids out there recognize. This is Miss Erica when she was in high school. She was a freshman in high school, and she was a cheerleader. Now, you see that she had a special uniform that she had to wear. And she had all kinds of pom-poms, and she did all kinds of tricks. And after a year of that, she said, OK, I'm done. <laughs> done that. Check that off my list. Uh, but you know, she made a cute little cheerleader. Um, today, in our scripture reading, we're going to hear about how we are called to be cheerleaders, how we in the church are called to encourage other people, because really, that's what cheerleaders do, right? Cheerleaders, you know, get the crowd cheering so that then the, the sports team will do a better job or they'll get excited and they'll, they'll um, you know, try to be inspired by the crowd. Now, of course, right now with the Olympics going on, there aren't many crowds, right? 
But under normal circumstances, what we used to know as normal, um, you will see, and even now, sometimes you'll see cheerleaders who are cheering on the crowd, who are trying to get the crowd revved up so that they can cheer on the players. Or what they're doing is trying to encourage them, inspire them to do the best job that they can. So how are we supposed to be cheerleaders in the church? Well, what we're supposed to do is encourage one another, those who are part of our church family, to, to be attentive to their faith. But it also means encouraging those who are not part of our church family to come and check us out and see if this church is one that they might want to become a part of. And so there are a lot of ways that we can encourage people without being a cheerleader and having a bunch of pom-poms, but instead just encouraging folks, talking to them, inviting them to come and be a part of Sunday school or church. So I hope that you will all remember that God calls us to be cheerleaders and wants us to cheer each other on so that we can do our best. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we are grateful that you uh, call upon us to cheer on our fellow uh, church members and also those in the community who might be interested in, and want to be a part of our church. Help us to invite others to come and be a part of Song of Life. Help us to be the church here in this place. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our first scripture comes from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. In this excerpt, Paul likens the church to a building placed on a firm foundation that is Jesus Christ himself. Listen to what Paul has to say to the Ephesian church in chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, as found in the Common English Bible. So, now you are no longer strangers and aliens. Rather, you're fellow citizens with God's people, and you belong to God's household. As God's household, you are built on a foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. The whole building is joined together in him, and it grows up in a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. May God add blessing to the reading of the scripture. We are all looking for something more out of life. Something that gives us purpose. Direction. A sense of community. For the past 2,000 years, people have found these things in a place called church. For centuries, the church has helped those who couldn't help themselves. The hungry. It's been a place of healing and restoration for those who've been hurt. A home to orphans. A comfort to widows. And a refuge to the sick. But the church does so much more than just reaching out to those in need. It's a place where together we can grow, laugh and play, worship and learn about a God who loves us unconditionally. 
and see firsthand how his love impacts the world around us. Because of Christ, we all share a common bond. And it's through the church that we can really live life together. Welcome to church. Friends, this morning we are finishing up our sermon series called Created to Be. And in this series, we've looked at how we are created to be good stewards of ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. We've also looked at the ways that we are called to be good stewards of our world by taking better care of our environment and also by taking care of each of us and other people in the world. Today, we are considering how we are going to be good stewards of the church. Now, I'm sure some of you, as you are hearing the word steward, are thinking of stewardship, and you're going to think that I'm going to preach to you about giving money. I'm not. So uh, we're going to look at the ways that, the different ways that we are called to be good stewards of this place as well as the church universal. So I'm reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. And by the way, the book of Hebrews, the author of the book, is unknown. Uh, we have no idea who wrote the book, uh, but we do know that it was written to the, the Jewish uh, people who were believers in Christ. And so let us hear what he has to tell us in chapter 10. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. May God add wisdom to the reading of these words. A mother walked into her son's bedroom one morning and said, son, it's time to get up. You need to get ready for church. But mom, the son replied, I don't want to go to church. You have to go, the mother said. Now get up out of bed. Please, mom, the son whined. I, I really just don't want to go. Give me one good reason why I have to go to church. So the mother said, I will give you three good reasons. First, uh, when you get there, you are always glad to see the people there. You're always glad to be there. And second, you always enjoy the music. And I know that today will be no exception. And third, you're the pastor. You have to go to church. So get up. Let's be honest. We've all made excuses for not going to church. From I'm just too tired to my kids have a sports game to I worship God on the golf course to it's raining outside I'm sure we've heard them all. Even reasons like, I go to brunch on Sunday, never mind the fact that they serve brunch until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And things like, the church just wants your money, often round up the top 10 reasons why we don't go to church. But my all-time favorite was one that was sent to a newspaper as a letter to the editor. You see, this, uh, this churchgoer wrote the letter complaining that going to church made no sense. He wrote, I've gone for 30 years now, and in that time I've heard something like 3,000 sermons, but for the life of me, I can't remember a single one. So I think I'm wasting my time, and the pastors are wasting their times by preparing and delivering those sermons at all. Well, that started quite a controversy, with many replies being sent to the letters to the editor column. And it went on for weeks until one man wrote the following. I've been married for 30 years. 
And in that time, since I never learned how to cook, my spouse prepared some 32,000 meals for me. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for a single one. But I do know this. All of those meals nourished me, and they gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my spouse had not prepared all those meals for me, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, he continued, if I had not gone to church for spiritual nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. You know, in spite of what that man wrote in that letters to the editor column, we all still come up with reasons why we can't come to church on Sundays. In fact, when our kids were younger uh, and I was working out the, outside the home more than 40 hours a week, uh, my go-to excuse was that I wanted to spend more time with my kids. And I also had laundry to do. And while the reasons that I previously mentioned are just a few that many of us have undoubtedly heard from time to time, since the pandemic, I've heard some very different reasons why previously regular attenders have not been attending worship over the last 18 months. For example, some either could not or did not want to, <clears throat> to go online to participate in worship. Either they had technical issues or online worship just wasn't for them. And I get it. Online worship was no picnic for us either as worship leaders. In fact, it was, it was really difficult sometimes just trying to preach in front of an iPad with no one else in the chairs. But sadly, the, the fact that online church wasn't accessible or desirable for some of those who weren't in attendance when we were worshiping strictly online, that has led to another reason why some have not come back. They've gotten out of the habit of attending worship and even attending some of the small groups. Some of those who attended regularly before the pandemic have sadly substituted one Sunday habit for another, whether it be sleeping in or having a late breakfast or scheduling a tea time on the golf course. The momentum of attending worship every Sunday morning has given way to staying home or doing something else. Now, to be clear, some are also afraid of attending in-person worship, either because they are at risk or they're just not willing to take the chance of catching the virus. And I'm also sure there are some who are attending online who haven't told us so. And if they don't tell us that they're attending, we don't know that you're out there. And so we, all, we strongly encourage you to uh, register your attendance online so we know you're still there and with us. And finally, some, sadly, have decided that after an 18-month hiatus, that they simply don't need to attend church anymore. They've been disconnected for so long that perhaps they feel that if they don't come back, no one will miss them. But that couldn't be further from the truth. So today we are considering what it means to be good stewards of the church. And as we know from last Sunday, a steward is not only someone who cares for someone or something, but they also act on behalf of a person or an organization, like an ambassador. So we, as ambassadors for the church, are supposed to do certain things according to the scriptures that we read this morning and some others that we did not read. For example, in Hebrews 10, we hear three actions that we must take as good stewards. First, the author writes, let us consider. In other words, let us think about, be concerned about, take note of, perceive, discern, or contemplate. 
With these words, the author is urging us as the church to give serious thought to what we say and what we do, since we are, are likely to be interacting with folks who have been part of our church and who we want to continue to be part of our church. Our words and actions should not be flippant. They should not be off the cuff. Rather, they should be planned out, prepared, even rehearsed. So what an interactions are we then called to consider? The Common English Bible says we must consider how we may spur one another on. Now other translations use words like provoke, incite, inspire, even pester. So in essence, the author is suggesting that we must lovingly provoke or pester our apathetic or fearful friends uh, out of their complacency so they will take action and return to church, whether they return online or in person. In other words, we must strongly encourage those who have been inattentive to their faith or have drifted away from their calling so they will return to specific activities. And this, these are the activities that the author suggests. Loving others, doing good deeds, meeting together in worship and study and fellowship, and encouraging others during difficult times. As good stewards of our church, the author of Hebrews 10 said, says we must pester one another to be more attentive to our faith, especially inspiring those who have drifted away not to neglect the opportunity to meet together as the church. So how do we do that without alienating or offending those who need to be pestered? Well, perhaps we can follow the example of a pastor who once visited a man from her church. You see, the man had been absent from church for quite some time. So when the pastor arrived at his home, she found him sitting on the floor in front of the fire. He was staring at the glowing coals in the fireplace. The man fully expected his pastor to rebuke him for not attending. But instead, the pastor pulled up a chair and sat right next to him in front of the fireplace. Using the fireplace tongs, the pastor reached into the fire and took out one of the red hot glowing coals, placed it by itself out on the hearth, and in no time at all, that coal began to lose its glow, and within minutes, it was completely black. After staring at that coal for several minutes, the man looked into the face of his pastor who had not said a word during the entirety of the visit. And with a smile that showed that he understood exactly what she was trying to tell him, he said, thank you for coming, Pastor. I will be in church this coming Sunday. As good stewards of our church, we naturally care about those who are in our church family. But in our passage from Ephesians this morning, Paul reminds us that there is more to it than just that. He reminds us through his letter, <coughs> excuse me, through his letter to the church in Ephesus of their mission, which is to grow the church into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord and is the place where God lives. The foundation, he writes, is the preaching of the apostles and the prophets whose primary job was to spread the good news of God's love for all people, not just those who call themselves believers. And the cornerstone, which in ancient architecture was the reference point that determined the position of all the rest of the entire structure, was none other than Christ himself. The rest of the building is made up of people like us, believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
But if the building is to become, go from being a mere building to a great temple, others must be added. So we must use our gifts to spread the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to make new disciples so that the body of Christ will grow. As believers, we are called by Christ to make disciples, thereby growing the church into the temple it was meant to become. And finally, while the gifts of prophecy and evangelism are very effective gifts, they aren't the only ones that we have been given by God, and they aren't the only ones that we are called to use. In Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul uses the analogy of the human body to describe the variety of spiritual gifts we've been given. You probably all remember that scripture where he talks about the feet and the hands and the, the eyes. These gifts are meant to be used to the glory of God. As, but as good stewards of the church, we are called to use those gifts to also benefit the community and the church. So what does that all mean for us? Well, in Hebrews 10, we are called by God to encourage fellow believers to remind them of their calling from God that they should love other people to do good deeds that will help them get through their life's difficult times. We are also called to urge those who, for whatever reason, have gotten out of the habit of attending worship, asking them to return, either online or in person. That means contacting folks you know who haven't been seen here in in-person worship or whose names have not appeared on the online chat and inviting them to return to worship at Song of Life. It means letting them know that we miss them and we love them. And if they are attending a different church, we must wish them well and remind them that they are always welcome here at Song of Life. And from Ephesians 2, we are called to grow our church by inviting new people that we know who aren't currently attending Song of Life. We want to ask them to check us out, whether it's in person or online. Now, what's that I hear? You've never invited somebody to come with you to church? You don't quite know how to do it? Well, maybe this video will give you a few ideas. this like every week but would you like to ride to church with me oh come on mrs edwards you'll like my church we have some hot music it may not be what you're bumping at all but it's hot we get down what do you say mrs edwards oh uh, i suppose I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <sighs> okay. 
way. Here we are. Some of you have probably seen that video before, but I just love it. <laughs> it certainly makes the point, doesn't it? But do you see how easy that was, just hanging out the window? Hey, come with me to church. So finally, uh, Paul reminds us of our calling to use our spiritual gifts as good stewards of our church. Whether we possess the gift of prophecy, praying, preaching, evangelism, teaching, or serving others, we are called to use our spiritual gifts to care for our church and its people. I'm sure many of you have noticed the prayer garden that we have um, here at the end of our, our parking lot. Sadly, one of the branches of the trees broke off uh, over the weekend, and, and so we've got to get that repaired. But um, it was actually designed and built by a gifted member of our church who asked me if she could create a prayer garden in that space in memory of a family member who had died. The result of that conversation was a beautiful garden that can be used by all as a place to meditate, pray, and even remember those we have lost. As good stewards of our church, you too can share your vision and your gifts to create new opportunities here at Song of Life to benefit not only the church, but also the community. My friends, when we respond to God's call to be good stewards of the church, our church will grow and thrive, even now as we continue living through a global pandemic. As good stewards of our church, we welcome those who are new to our church and welcome back those who have fallen away, both in person and online. And as good stewards of our church, we work to build up our church and the church universal by using our spiritual gifts. As good stewards of our church, we can begin to make a difference by being the church, a place where all belong. Friends, let us sing together our song of response. Uh, Blessed be the tie that binds. We will sing just two verses, and the words will be on the screen.
friends, before we enter into our prayer time, I would just like to share a few um, things that are going on in the life of our church. Uh, later this afternoon, after the praise service, we are going to be celebrating the ministry of uh, Carrie and Sean Claypool and their family. Um, sadly, the Claypools are moving to North Carolina, and so they will be moving shortly. Today is their last Sunday with us. They'll both be in the praise service. Um, their kids are scattered. Um, I think Hannah might be here. I'm not sure, but um, their other kids are scattered um, in other parts of the country, and uh, we, of course, are very blessed that to have had them as uh, very important mem members, um, uh, almost pillars of this church since the, almost the very beginning of Song of Life more than 20 years ago. So we invite you to come back around 12.15 and share in that. We will do some presentations around 1 o'clock. Um, we hope to wrap things up at 2 o'clock or before. So, um, And we uh, have a couple of gifts that we will be giving them as well. Um, we also invite you to come back next Sunday after the praise service. Uh, next Sunday, August 1st, around 12.30 p.m., we're going to have a light lunch, and uh, we're going to have an all-church gathering. Uh, during this gathering, our, um, our, our campaign specialist from Horizon Stewardship, uh, he is the gentleman who is helping us uh, consider whether or not to do a uh, capital campaign in the coming years. Um, and he will be here to uh, share with us his res the results of the survey that he took um, and that was offered to many of you um, these last several, several weeks. Um, also want to share with you that Jose's Closet has finally got a new move date. Uh, they are looking to move around the third week of August. So if you are able to help uh, during that time or even help pack right now, um, I went and volunteered for an hour or so uh, a couple weeks ago and just packed, packed clothing up. Uh, it was great fun. Uh, reminded me of all the moves that David and I made during the, <laughs> the last few years. Um, but, uh, you know, we invite you to help out. Or if you're unable to help out and would like to contribute monetarily, you can certainly give a, a tax-free donation or a tax-deductible donation to uh, Jose's Closet through their website. Um, we also want to uh, make note of some joys and concerns. Marilyn Nichols is uh, experiencing some health concerns, and so we just uh, want to keep her and Ron in prayer. Um, we also want to keep um, uh, Nina Yardley, continue to keep her in prayer as well. Um, we have others who are continuing to um, need prayer by all of us. Uh, we share that through our prayer team, and so if you would like to be a member of our prayer team, we invite you to do that. All you need is an email address, and you can just send us an email at info at songoflifeumc.org, and uh, just uh, keep, um, uh, we will send you those, those prayer requests as they come in throughout the week. Uh, we're so grateful to see the Grams here today. Uh, very glad to see you here today. Friends, uh, as we... Uh, Prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer. I invite you to lift up your own joys and concerns as we share in a moment of silent prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we lift up our prayers to you our joys as well as our concerns. Oh God, we know that you hear us and we know that you speak to us. Help us to listen so that we can be guided as your church and as your people to do the things that you would call us to do. Oh God, we are grateful that we have the opportunity to uh, encourage those around us, whether they be people here in our church, uh, people who have fallen away, people who might be new to us. We ask that you inspire us to say the right words, to spur them on, to pester them, to provoke them, to encourage them so that they will encourage and love others and be more attentive to their faith. And Lord, help us to do the same. Help us to pester ourselves so that we too can be more attentive 
to the ways in which we share in your grace and your mercy here as your church. Oh God, we are grateful that we have been placed in this community so that we can minister the pe to the people of Queen Creek and Santan Valley and the other communities that surround us. God, we are grateful that we can be so close to Gilbert that we can um, offer our prayers and our presence with them as well. God, help us to be the church that welcomes all people, a place where everyone belongs. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the body of Christ, the church, we're called upon by God through Christ to be a refuge for those who are hurting or in need. One way we can do that is through our financial gifts, given not only in gratitude for what God has done for us, but also as a way of supporting the ministries of the church that reach out to those who are suffering. Through our giving, God's able to help others through the work that God inspires us to do. May we always give generously and cheerfully. We invite you to give your financial gifts either online, so the links found on our website, by using the church app or by placing them in the giving box as you leave worship today. Now, Let's take a moment and offer our prayer of thanksgiving for the givers, the gifts, and those who benefit from our generosity. O oh, holy, wondrous, and majestic God, we, your church, give you thanks for gathering us together in this sacred place. Everything we have is yours. You hold back nothing. As our act of praise and gratitude, we return a portion of what you have entrusted to us. We, your church, give you the glory. Through Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Marlene. Mm -hmm. We'll close our service with the hymn of celebration. I love thy kingdom, Lord. The words will be displayed, verses 2, 3, and 4. you to stand as we close our service this morning. And look at that. It is, I think it stopped raining. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Friends, 
having been inspired by this morning's service, we invite you now to go out into the world to meet God's people where they are, to encourage those around you, to encourage those who uh, have fallen away, and to encourage those that have not yet come into this, this place called Song of Life and invite them to come and be a part of this church family. May God bless you as you go out into the world to spread God's love and the love of Christ to all whom you meet this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday.